there. Welcome to Andaz. Andaz is an inspirational show brought to you from the United States. And every week we talk to great minds from around the country. Today I'm standing here at the home of the 49ers, the Levi Stadium. Inside the B&Y Melon Lounge. Now this lounge is exclusive to those season pass holders that pay $80,000 a season. They actually get front row seats and watch the Niners come out of the locker room and go out there and play. This week's episode is about athletes and entrepreneurs and the similarities between the two. What it takes to have a winning attitude and be a team player. We have many fabulous guests for you. Willie Galt, former Super Bowl champion and Olympian athlete. Today he's taken on his entrepreneurial journey. We also talked to Vivek Ranade, who most recently bought the Sacramento Kings. Blair LaCourt, who is a marathon runner and the global president for PRG. And we meet celebrity chef Michael Mina and hear how he made his dreams come true. Well, let's kick off the show here at the Levi Stadium, where we go behind the scenes and see how it all happens. Let's go take a look. The new home of the San Francisco 49ers is here. Hi, Jack. It's so great to be with you here at the Levi Stadium. Well, thanks, Justine. It's great to be here. We're up here on the NRG Solar Terrace. You guys are covering the cost of all of the 10 games. That's correct. How is that even possible? If you'll go to our game, you'll see a lot of the materials that we use are materials that are easily compostable. So as a goal, we think that's something that's achievable. Tell me, what was the process of building the stadium out when it came to technology? We really looked for, for folks that cared as much as we did about football, cared as much as we did about providing that super fan experience. I think we've done that. I think we've done a good job of that. You guys are really setting the tone for other stadiums on how they need to do things. Whether it's cell or Wi-Fi, just being able to connect while at the game is huge. So you can actually order food while you're sitting there and it's going to come to your seat. It's going to come to your seat. You're able to focus on the game. You don't have to get up. If you do want to get up, you can order for Express then just go grab it yourself. And if you do miss a play while on your way to Express, we have replay. So above and beyond what we've discussed, tell me some other secrets. But the museum has a lot of tech. The Michael Mina restaurant's awesome. I go there quite a bit with my team. Great ribs. Yeah, um, I walked by it and I was just like, oh my God, that's great. the best smell ever. I had my sights set on living in San Francisco. That's really where I, I wanted to live. I know. In fact, I was going to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. And I was <laughs> watching a show, Lifestyles of Rich and Famous with uh -huh. Robin Leach, and he was doing a special on San Francisco. I really had that moment where I said, that is unbelievable. That one show that changed one your whole show life. changed my whole life. People have those moments in their life, and I think that, you know, you don't know if you would have found it naturally anyhow, but right. the fact is I found it when I was 17, and I was able to pursue it, so I went to cooking school right after high school. So you're someone that manifests your dreams, obviously, uh -huh. and yeah. here you are today uh -huh. at the <laughs> Levi's 49ers Stadium. Yes. And not to mention 20 other restaurants, 20 plus other restaurants <laughs> that you've done in the past, yes. and now you're in San Francisco and all your dreams have come true. There's layers to success, understanding that you're going to need some luck. You're going to need some skills. So where do you get the luck hard from? Work. Skills, I okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> where know. do you get luck? I'm not sure. I think maybe my yeah. mother, she always prays for me. I learned right away that it was so much of a team sport and it was really mm -hmm. about the people around you. And You're here, <laughs> you're at the Levi Stadium, home to the 49ers, and yeah. you kind of see how their team is managed. Uh -huh. There's similarities that cross over in all sectors. The thing about cooking and sports, they're both very emotional, like you, your emotions run really high right. in the kitchen. Natural skills definitely help you a lot. You're relying on a coach or a leader to give you direction. And then the other part that people forget about our industry is how physical it is. I read that you keep a balance with your family life and uh -huh. your work life, and you've managed to do that by integrating the two. Yeah. And so you involve your family into your business and who you are as a person. I think mm -hmm. all entrepreneurs could learn from that. It's <laughs> kind of hard to balance. So how uh, have you managed to do that? We have involved our children from day one in everything right. we do. Kids are obviously have different personalities, right? My restaurants are like kids because they all yeah. kind of take on their yep. own personality. I love watching people that are 16, 17 years old get involved into a, the restaurant business because no matter what they do the rest of their life, what they learn is people skills. Right. And people skills are just as important. I think it's the most important. If you understand how to connect with people, you're just going to have a better life. So every day you have to set your standards and your goals to be better than you were the day before. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your food now. Uh -huh. I'm getting really hungry, by the okay. way. I, I can smell your food in the <laughs> kitchen and I'm like, I really want to eat. You've had to keep on evolving and changing and sure. discovering new things. Where do you yeah. get your oh, inspiration yeah. from? You know, I worked for some great chefs, 
you start to learn just how a kitchen functions and everything else. If you start it too early where you're so focused on the creative side but not as focused on learning, you know, all the different techniques and learning different uh -huh. ways of, of cooking, you'll kind of start to create yourself kind of a cap. And mm, that makes sense. Yeah, like you have to first get your foundation right, yeah. and then you can kind of just like do what you want, stuff. like anything in life. This particular point in my life is very magical. Magical. And, and yeah, to it's think. It's almost like goosebumps magical. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, you have no idea. I mean, I, I am very like passionate NHL's. about sports. I love sports. Mm -hmm. I, I and I love football. I was probably about 12, 12 or thirteen mm -hmm. when I started really following the 49ers, and then they were just so good. From Seattle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah. watching Seattle was painful then. It's still painful. <laughs> it's painful for a different reason now, but it's still painful. But and it's great. Like right now we're sitting here and Ronnie Lutz, you know, right across from us in the pub eating right now. He I is? Mean, you can grab him. <laughs> yeah, go get him. Go get him. Yeah. <laughs> Three or four years ago, I didn't I don't think I said Oh, you know, I, I'm sure I'll be doing something with the 49ers I know. in the future. And it just happened. And I got the phone call, and I remember. Were you like, Oh, wow. well, you know, you kind of had to play a little bit hard to get. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was like, yes. I know. <laughs> yes, I would be interested. What I really want to do is, mm -hmm. for 23 years, I've been tailgating with, you know, so many different. Your tailgate party. Oh, yeah, tell us about said, that. Yeah. And I said, I want to yeah. move my tailgate party inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they, so cool. And they love the idea. Justine's going to head back into your kitchen and Let's we're going to do a tour. Okay. Yeah. So, Michael, I'm just going to put all my cards on the table. <laughs> interviewing you today is like interviewing Brad Pitt. Oh, yeah. I'm a little serious. different, a little different. No, you're my Brad Pitt. And you know Thank why? You. Because I love food. I know that you started really young and you were in the kitchen by the age of 15 yes. wanting to become a chef right and you had to fight two people yeah. who were you fighting well my dad and my mom my dad was probably a little tougher but uh -huh. and it wasn't because anything that there's anything wrong being chef it's just yeah. it's different that's <laughs> yeah. the thing it's the unknown right you kind of get the doctor lawyer engineer conversation you know now the times are so much different now it's amazing i mean i'll be in the kitchen and and i'll have CEOs, some of the top companies in the Bay Area will ask me to come out to the table and I'll be having conversations with them and they're like, my son wants to be a chef. What am I going to get at this tailgate? <laughs> what am I going to experience? Let's see. We can roast a whole ox in there. So you can roast a bull in there. <laughs> all right. Oh my God. 1,200 pound animal. It's a lot of fun. I love all these big toys that you've got. Let's yeah. go check some of them Let's out. Let's go. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So this is... Uh, this is one of the four pots that we have. And it's, it takes a crane to get it over it there. It takes a crane. We have a lot of cranes around here. Ah. Shot of that. Look at that muscle. <laughs> you got really good looking people working here. I know. Is this a modeling agency or a restaurant? I love it. And then this is probably my favorite choice. You like this one because you can do s'mores? Yeah, you can do s'mores. Michael, thank you so much oh, for the you. amazing tour. <laughs> Thank you. And I have thank one you. last question thank for you, though. Thank you. Who's got it better than us? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. I'll tell you at the end of the year. <laughs>
as well as somebody who goes out there and makes your dreams come true. You bought the Kings recently. Before that, you were an owner of the Warriors. But I wanna get into your entrepreneurial journey. Tipco is a long lasting company that is always on the top and always going in full force over a long period of time. So how do you sustain that as an entrepreneur? Even though we're a billion dollar company, we're a multi-billion dollar company, mm -hmm. we think of ourselves as a startup. It's based on a culture of innovation. So half our revenues in five years will come from products we have yet to invent. So really, wow. it's a company uh, that has this creative force and you have to keep moving and you have to keep inventing. How do you keep that innovative spirit alive? Many people have a false view of what it takes to have an innovative culture. They think that uh, you have ping pong and foosball tables everywhere, yeah. that you let them bring their dogs to work, you give them massages and that's what makes for innovation. In order to have an innovative culture, you gotta hire the best people, put them in a room, turn the lights off, turn the power off, cut off the food, cut off the water, give them nothing. And then after that, a few weeks later, if you still see green shoots coming out from under the door, then you're onto something. That's a great philosophy. Yeah, so Tipco is a pioneer in uh, integration software. What we did is we made the world real time. So our software, allows uh, information to be instantaneously accessed. So what we do is we allow our customers to get ahead of the curve and we give them what I call in my last book, the two-second advantage. We want to know that a customer is going to become unhappy before the customer becomes unhappy. So you can actually do something about it. You actually used your knowledge as an entrepreneur to coach your daughter's team. Sure, so I was a single dad. I wanted to spend more time with my daughter. She was 12 years old and I foolishly volunteered to coach her basketball team. Now understand that I grew up in Bombay. Cricket was my favorite sport yeah. and I never actually touched a basketball. Yeah. I showed up <laughs> at the practice and I realized that I had already fallen behind because they had this thing called a draft and the other coaches had picked all the best girls. So they gave me the girls that nobody wanted. I looked around the room and there were these seven foot tall ex Stanford Division One players who were the other coaches and then there was me. So I said, okay, you know, I'm about to make a complete fool of myself. I'm a guy who hates to lose. And so I went back to the drawing board and being the math guy that I am, I created an equation for the game. And I implemented that equation and ended up winning every single game and taking the team to the national championship. So Justine, this is This my, is lovely. So uh, this is Pino. This is Pino. And, and then, uh, we've had a couple of harvests so far. All right, well, yeah. let's go check out your basketball court. There you go. You're good. Woo. Okay, I'll tell you a little secret when you shoot. Put on the dot, and you can just point towards the basket and shoot. Test my luck once more. Look at that. What? See that? She is good. That was a lot easier. We need a three-point shooter. We need a three-point shooter on the team. I'm going to recommend you to Pete D'Alessandro, our GM, okay. and ask him to give you a tryout. Okay. Should I let Sarka know that, I, that I'm quitting? Well, I think I wouldn't just quit my day job just yet. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, but Pete will give you a fair tryout. Okay. Thank you, Vivek. I think it's pretty neat how you took algorithms and took them out onto the basketball court and used your entrepreneurial skills and team building skills to create a winning team. Nice swish, Justine. I'm gonna have to challenge you out there on the court. And next, we have former Super Bowl champion and Olympian, Willie Galt. Let's go take a look. You have been an Olympian, winter and summer games. You played in the NFL for the Chicago Bears and the Los Angeles right, Raiders. Right. I, I'm, I'm not very good wow, at that. That's good, I'm impressed. You're one of the fastest runners of all time. Right. You've owned an airline, a restaurant chain, and now you're getting into acting, most recently with Rob Lowe, right? Right. So let's talk about fighting through adversity. Yes. Whenever you're achieving something great in life, there's always moments of setbacks or right. perhaps um, what we call little failures along the way. I mean, I know you're all right. success, but there had to have been that time where you're like, what am I doing? Why am I doing right. all of this? 
Right, well, there, there are setbacks in life. I, I think your setbacks actually make you and create the person that you become because you learn a lot about yourself when you have to go through adversity. Uh, when I go through adversity, I just remember that I'm not as great as my best moment and I'm not as bad as my worst moment. I'm somewhere in between, so I have to know that there's always going to be a better day. Someone came in, touched your life, and kind of changed something. The obvious would be my sister. My sister and I were very close. We grew up together. We were one year apart, and uh, she influenced my life in a great day. My sister was a better athlete than I was. She was faster than I was wow. at the time. And so she was my, my, my hero in a sense, without me telling her that, because I would never tell her that, because it would make her head way too big. We grew up together, and she developed cancer in uh, 2000, and then in 2001 she died. And it was a really traumatic thing for me in my life, but it gave me the, uh, the drive to say, look, my life is way too short and I can't waste it on just anything. I gotta really go out and go for things I want and I can't live unhappy. I gotta be, you know, do the things I wanna do. So it gave me a different perspective on life that, you know, life is precious. If we live 100 years, it's still short in the whole scheme of things. Being an athlete is, is a probably 90% mental. I mean, if you have, everybody has a physical ability. But the mental ability to be able to fight when things are going wrong or when things are going right, to not over cocky about it, uh, that's what be you become a true athlete. And understanding that, you know, you're, it's mano on mano. Uh, it's you against the next guy. Can you beat that guy? Do you believe you can beat that guy? So confidence is, is everything. It's 90% of the game. So when you're in the field, in those little moments where you're like, oh, this didn't go the way I was, it was supposed to. I mean, think back to a time where you had to really get your mindset strong. Because I want our viewers to understand they can do that in real life. Again, it's, it's all believing. It's, it's mindset. It's, it's uh, being determined and, and knowing that you can beat that guy on, on, on any given mm -hmm. day. And if you believe that and go out and, and uh, try to achieve that, then most time you'll be successful. If not, you, you don't give up. You go, okay, you, did, you beat me this time, next time I'll beat you. Right. And how did you translate that into what you're doing now? Well, it's the same thing. Like in business now, I, I just created, I just actually got my license to be a, a licensed insurance person. Yeah. So I'm going to create a system for athletes and that when when they retire, they don't go broke after three or four years. So I'm excited That's about amazing. that. That's right. amazing. Tell us more about right. that. Well, I'm, I'm working yeah. with the big insurance mm -hmm. agencies and we're going to premium finance uh, mm -hmm. a deal for, for athletes and entertainers uh, because there's a problem because of they make so much money and then all of a sudden they don't know what to do with it and then when they retire, they're, they're broke afterwards or file for bankruptcy. It's a, a staggering figure. Mm -hmm. So we're creating a system for me personally uh, that I'm going to have for, for all these athletes. I love your mindset right. and your positive outlook on life and um, the way you're living and you just keep on going. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah, of course. Right. Andaz, brought to you by Intellius. Live in the know. Visit www.intellius.com. Ushaji, your spiritual advisor. Call now or visit ushaji.org. Trivium Corporate Solutions for the life of your business. TriviumCS.com. Basic Ayurveda, your source for Ayurvedic juices. Visit BasicAyurvedaUSA.com. Thanks, Willie. That's a winning attitude. And next, Justine's going to tell us about our social media competition of the week. And I'll see you all next week. Hi guys, it's Justine. I'm here at Levi Stadium and I've had such a blast. I even got myself some swag. So for this week's social media updates, go on and charge over to our Facebook where you'll find a picture of me in the stadium and you'll comment with your favorite athlete and why. I'll pick my favorite answer and you'll win a signed football from Willie Gall. Also make sure you jolt on over to our Twitter for our Twitter View Tuesdays where you can have a one-on-one -on -one with Blair LaCourt who's the global president of PRG. That's a big deal. And speaking of Blair, I recently got to sit down with him on his boat, take him away from his jet set life and talk about how to have a winning attitude. It was a great time. Let's go on over and check that out. up and you were actually born a preemie. You also had asthma, but you wanted to do cross country. So what mindset did you have that made you want to overcome those obstacles? Well, I think that, you know, there's two things that you find uh, in common with a lot of people who grew up with challenges. And one of them is that you had someone that believed in you and unconditionally loved you. And the second is that you developed a process where you didn't have to achieve it overnight, but you could achieve it step by step. And I was fortunate because I both had my father um, with me and also he was my coach. 
So he never, ever gave up on the fact that uh, you may not achieve it today, but you can achieve it tomorrow. Ah, so slow and steady. Wins the race. Oh yeah. Eventually. So you're the global president of PRG. Very exciting. It's the largest live event production company in the world. Tell me about that. It's, it's actually a really, really interesting company. It's a private company, 35 years old, and it was founded by a set of guys who were just really, really passionate about uh, entertainment and trade shows, and they, they really invented the industry. What's interesting about PRG in, in, is that we have a real deep heritage and a deep DNA in entertainment. We're the number one company on Broadway in the West End, and we just actually, I'm proud to say, won a Tony for uh, the Carol King Beautiful show, which we completely uh, pushed the limits and integrated all of the uh, lighting and sound and audio in a way no one had ever done before. So when you, when you have a group of people who have, have been doing this for 35 years and you've done it in Broadway, we do most of the concerts in the world from U2, Rolling Stones, Paul McCartney, Coachella, South by Southwest. We also do most of the live TV events, the Academy Awards, the Grammys. We're able to take those very specific um, and innovative shows and we're able to take the technology and the creativity and then bring them to corporate events and to other places around the world. Today it's a global environment not just for how you source equipment but it's a global environment for ideas and creativity and if we're not on that um, on that track we're gonna lose because there's a lot of guys nipping at our heels. What was your experience with secondary education and do you think it's important now in an environment where kids are dropping out? I actually believe that you know entrepreneurship is not taught it's something that comes from within you. You can teach entrepreneurial skills and uh, you can teach technical and business skills. I was fortunate in that my secondary education was not only to learn the business skills but to meet people. And when you look at the statistics, if you can go to a place where you can meet the right people and get an education and you fit into the culture, it's a tremendous benefit. I know you were in the tech industry for 12 years and you've accomplished a lot there and then you actually have gone into different industries and done really well and you just continue to move on into different companies. You know, I'm just wondering, why is there that pattern of success? So I think that, you know, the first thing you have to do is you have to be self-aware. And again, um, it's not as easy as it sounds, but what I realized early on was I didn't actually need to invent anything. I wanted to help people figure out how to bring it to market. And once I decided that, I realized that it wasn't about picking an industry. It was about hooking up with the right people and finding the right patterns. So I think for me, it's been the right place to be, has been to go from industry to industry and try to bring things with me. I've learned so much. And it's one of the things that gets me up every day. And I think when you talk about successful people, what you'll find, whether they're an entrepreneur inventing things, or there's someone that's running a company, or there's someone who's actually trying to save a company. Your passion is that you want the information. It isn't that you have to take it. Yeah, if you're continuously learning, you're growing. Right, and if you can put it into patterns, and you can store it in those patterns and recall it, mm -hmm. then you're gonna be able to help people, and you're gonna be able to leverage. That's yourself. so refreshing to hear you say. People only do business people that they like and trust. It's true, when there's a tie, they're gonna go with you, and that's really where you, you, know, you find where you love working with the people. Right. Yeah. So true. You're a successful person, but above and beyond that, you're a good person. And the team that you're building, you care about them. Well, listen, I hope that's the truth. I mean, I, I, I would like to believe at the end of the day that I'll be judged as a, as a good person. You have to be careful that a good person isn't about always being nice. At the end of the day, your job as a leader is not just to make people like you, but make people respect that you know, you're there to help them win. Thank you for having us here at your home. I wish you the best of luck. You truly are the master of all trades, not the jack of all trades. You're the master of all trades. It's been exciting to see you delve into different industries and just continue to do well. Thank you, and thank you for having me on. I, I love your show, and I'm really honored to be here. To wrap up the show, remember to always have a winning attitude and that every day is a new game and you can set the rules. So stay focused and you can achieve anything. And we'll see you next week right here on Andaz.
Andaz, brought to you by Intellius. Live in the know. Visit www.intellius.com. Ushaji, your spiritual advisor. Call now or visit ushaji.org. Trivium Corporate Solutions, for the life of your business. TriviumCS.com. Basic Ayurveda, your source for Ayurvedic juices. Visit basicayurvedausa.com.